and welcome back to Teacher Gimple's Classroom. Today we're going to be going over illustrative math, algebra one, unit one, lesson number 10. If you have any questions or comments or are new to this forum, you can go back and look at any of my old lessons to find the old content as well. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe so you can get more like it. Let's get started. Problem number one, select all distribution shapes for, it is where, for which it is most appropriate to use the mean. All right, so we want to identify all the different distribution shapes. I'm going to quickly just draw a little picture of each one because that helps me visualize things. All right, we got symmetric. So symmetric can look like a bunch of different things and then uniform. So for a bell shape, when you have a symmetric distribution, the mean is a good option. When you have a bimodal distribution, the mean doesn't really get this point here or this point there and is not a good option to calculate the middle of the distribution. A skewed distribution, when you have a lot of data on one side and less on the other, is going to pull your mean towards the skew, and it's not going to be a good measure of center. However, when you're symmetric, you're going to be good to go with using the mean. The uniform, all of your data is the same, so your mean is also a good measure of center in that case. Let's move on to the next question. For which distribution shape is it appropriate to use the median when summarizing the data? So the bell shape, it would be appropriate to use the median. The skewed, it would be appropriate to use the median. The symmetric, it would be appropriate to use the median. And also the uniform distribution. However, in this case, I would circle skewed as my answer just because we already just went over how we can use the mean for the bell, the symmetric, and the uniform. So when the mean doesn't work, we're going to go back to the median. So the median would be the best option for the skewed graph right there. Let's keep going. Problem number three. The number of writing instruments in some teacher's desk is displayed in the dot plot. Which is greater, the mean or the median? Explain your reasoning using the, uh, using the shape of the distribution. So I'm going to draw my distribution here. I see we've got a tail right there. So when we have a distribution, the median is going to not really get changed by having a skew, but the mean is going to get pulled over. So the mean is going to be closer to where the tail is than the median. In this case, because the tail is on the right, I'm going to say the mean is less than the median. And that's just in general how it works. This five is going to dramatically change the mean, even though a lot of the data is up over here. And that's a pretty easy rule of thumb, is wherever direction you're skewed, the mean will also be skewed in that direction. However, the median doesn't change so much dependent on the skewed, which is why we have multiple different ways to measure the center of a distribution. Let's look at problem number four. A student has these scores on their assignments. The teacher is considering dropping the lowest score. What effects does eliminating the lowest value, zero, from the data have on the mean and the median? Well, let's think about it. Zero is way lower than all the rest of the scores. So when you add a zero, it's going to pull the mean to the left. So getting rid of zero, it's going to make the mean is going to get bigger because you're taking away a value that's very low. However, when you're calculating the median by crossing out the values and finding one that's in the middle, we're talking about the difference between 80. If we cross out the zero, the median is going to go somewhere between 75 and 80. So the median, it does get a little bit smaller, but it, uh, it does get a little bit bigger because when you have the zero, it's actually going to go, I apologize, we're getting rid of a value. So if we get rid of the zero over here, our median is going to shift slightly to the right. So in this case, our mean is going to get bigger and our median is going to get slightly bigger. So both kind of shift to the right, but the mean is much more strongly affected than the median which is why, again, sometimes it's good to get rid of outliers when our data has an extra outlier to identify the center of the distribution. Problem number five. What is the five number summary for the data right there? So if you remember the five number summary, we actually use that when we are creating dot plots. I like to draw my little table. So I've got my min here. I've got my max there. I've got my medium in the middle. And I do Q1 and Q3. My min is my lowest value. My max is my highest value. Now let's cross these out. 
I keep on doing the medians wrong. We got five as the median. Our data is now split into two boxes or two pools. I'm left with two numbers in the middle, so I say 2 plus 4 divided by 2, which gets me 6 divided by 2, which is 3, which gets me Q1. And then on this side, cross out, cross out, these are my two middle values. So I'm finding the median of the top 50% of my data. And we got our Q, this is our Q3 right there. There we go. So our five number summary is going to be 2, 3, 5, 8, and 15. And that gives us a general sense of the distribution of our values of this data set. When the maximum of the data is 15, what happens to the five number summary? So take a second and pause this video here if you want to look over on how to do the five number summary again. If not, I'm going to erase it and we're going to calculate it again without the 15. So we remove the 15 from the data. Let's go ahead, draw another table and calculate our five number summary again. Our min will be two. Our max will be nine in this case. Our median goes here, our Q1 and Q3. So we cross out, cross out. Bum, bum, bum. And our middle value is this one right there, is a five. Now we're gonna go ahead and we are going to, why do I feel like I did the medium wrong in the last five number summary? Cross it out a second time. So we're going to find the medium of the bottom and of the top. Cross out, cross out. 2 plus 4 is 6 divided by 2, which is 3. And then we have 6 plus 7 divided by 2, which gets us 13 divided by 2, which is 6.5. 6.5. So as you can see, our five number summary, all of the numbers got slightly less in this case. All right. Let me know in the comments if I made a mistake with a five number summary the first time, because I feel like the median should be slightly different. But let me know in the comments if you can find it. Problem number six. The box plot summarizes the test scores for 100 students. So we've got this box plot over here. I know where my min is, my max is, my median, my Q1, my Q3. Which term best describes the shape of the distribution? Well, I see that it has a tail all the way over here. And that almost immediately tells me that it's skewed. So it represents a skewed distribution. In our last video, there was a pretty good example of a dot plot and a box plot back to back. You could see them on the same screen. And you could really see how the skew and the dot plot related to a box plot in that case. So if you want to check that out, it's in the lesson nine video of unit one of algebra one. Our last question, problem number seven. The histogram represents the distribution in length and inches of 25 catfish caught in the late lake. If possible, find the mean. If not possible, explain, explain why not. Well, I do think we well, can we find the mean? We don't actually know. We know that there are four values between three and six, but we don't know what they are. And we know that there is nine values between six and nine, but we also don't know what they are. So in this case, we actually cannot find what the mean is. So we're just going to put nope with a sad face because we don't have enough information to find what the mean is. Similarly, with the median, we can calculate which bundle the median is, but we can't actually calculate what it is. So I know if it's between 6 or 10 or 10, 9 or 12, but we don't actually know what that median is because we could have this box over here, which has nine values. Maybe it's seven catfishes that are seven inches long and two that are eight inches long, or maybe it's five catfishes that are seven inches long, two that are eight, one that are nine. Like it, it's hard to know exactly what falls out on those bundle. We just know that there's nine somewhere between six and nine. So that doesn't give us enough information about the specific values to either calculate the mean or the median. So we're gonna put a nope here as well and a sad face. Were any of the fish caught 12 inches long? Well, we know that there were fish between 12 and 15 and between nine and 12, we don't actually know if one was exactly 12 inches long. 
Like we just don't. It, it could be that we had a bunch that were 13. It could be that we had a bunch that were 10. We're not given the actual values of the fish. And we're not also can't calculate that from the histogram. So we're going to put down I, D, K. Although I would put an explanation if you're answering this on your own. Finally, were any of the fish caught 19 inches long? We know that there was one fish caught between 15 and 18 inches, but there is no data above this. So that is enough to conclude there were no fish caught that were 19 inches long. If there was something that was 19 inches long, you would see an extra box over here. Because there isn't, it means that the po biggest possible fish would be 18 inches long. So this is the only one that we can answer definitively, knowing that there was no fish caught, that it was 19 inches long. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, or find any mistakes, please put them in the comments below. If you'd like this video, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.